the Apple stock got a pretty big bump on its share price yesterday. And this was on the back of some pretty big news. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about exactly what happened. We're also gonna go and do a detailed financial analysis on the company. And at the end of this video, we're gonna let you know exactly where we think the stock is headed over the next 12 months. So let's get into it. Before we get into it, if you can just very quickly click that like button to help support this channel, we really would appreciate it. And if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed, consider clicking the subscribe button down below. So the news out at the moment is that uh, Apple is going to be pushing ahead very aggressively to uh, build out their all-electric car self-driving uh, side of the business. And this, of course, uh, is what drove the price yesterday. Now, the big news out is that not only are they refocusing internally on the project, but according to Kevin Lynch, who is spearheading the effort from Apple in this regard, that they intend to be in the market within the next four years with this product offering. And this, of course, got a lot of investors very excited. And uh, as we can see, having a look at uh, the trading graphs yesterday uh, up 4.91%. And in fact, Apple's done pretty well this year. It's up uh, over the last month 6%. If we zoom out to the last six months, 28%. Year to date, 21%. And over the last year, 33%. So certainly, Apple has really produced for its investors. And uh, the big question on everybody's mind is, should you still be looking to invest into Apple? If you don't currently hold any Apple shares, is this the time that you should start looking to buy in, especially with this big EV play coming out? In addition to which, if you currently hold Apple shares, should you keep holding? Well, to answer this question and to really make sense of what's going on, the best thing to do is to look at the company financials in relation to the stock price. So just very quickly, we can see on the graphs, it's been an absolute hell of a run for Apple over the last couple of years. They really have gone to incredible, incredible heights. Now, if we come to the overview, we can see huge market cap, $2.5 trillion. And of course, this is with a share price on the 10 at 1885, currently trading at 157 with a P of 2736. Healthy net margin at 25.88%, very strong equity. The equity representing uh, to market cap 2.52%, small dividend on the stock at 0.55, and they have a payout ratio of 15.46%. So easily afforded after the free cash flows. And uh, that means that overall, Apple is sitting in a very, very healthy position. Now, of course, coming down to the key ratios, this is where there's quite a bit of discussion and debate that needs to be had because there are a couple of areas of concern. So first of all, of course, is that debt to equity. Debt to equity at Apple is exceptionally high and they are employing a lot of debt within the business. This is, of course, very strategic because money is cheap at the moment. However, it remains to be seen how they're going to manage that position in the future. In terms of free cash flow to debt, they can essentially pay down 36% uh, 30 of their debt uh, with the available free cash flow. So that's pretty strong. Price to sell sitting at 708. Uh, price to book is just completely insane at 41.1. Uh, the five year beta, very average at 1.21. Insiders hold 0.7% of all shares and institutional holding, very strong sitting at 58.68. Now there is a small short ratio out and there's about 0.61% of all stock is short with a ratio of 1.34. Now the last year has been pretty exceptional for the company. 147% uh, on the return on equity, 20% on the return on asset, and get a load of this, return on investor capital, 163%. They have a very healthy current ratio, sitting at 1.08, and uh, their compound annual revenue growth is sitting at 8.33%. On the free cash flows compounding at 7.66 over the last four years and uh, free cash flow compounding at 9.73 and of course the thing that has a lot of investors excited is those earnings per share compound annual growth of 17.13 percent over the last four years now when we come down to the year on years this is really where we start to see the breakout that has happened for apple and it really has been during the pandemic we can see here Earnings per share is up, top line revenues are up, the bottom line revenues are up, 
And uh, it's certainly a big improvement from here where they fell back. I mean, we can see earnings per share went from 2.98 to 2.97. A little bit of a fallback, but of course, a big fallback on a lot of the key revenue indicators. However, in the last trading 12 months and the year before, they have just done an exceptional job at generating money and obviously turning that money into bottom line profit. Now, of course, this brings us down to our checklist. Now, if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, Previously, I used to have a 12-point checklist and uh, Davi, my partner here on the channel, had a 10-point checklist. We've essentially brought the best of both checklists together and we have come up with a very strong uh, growth and momentum-based checklist, but that really focuses in on the fundamentals. So the first question on our checklist is, has there been momentum in the share price? In other words, has the share price doubled since inception? And certainly it has. So that's a check mark. We have to unfortunately mark them down for the P ratio because it is over 25. The net margin is of course over 10%, so we're very comfortable with that. They have positive equity, so that's another check mark. And the current ratio is greater than one, so that's another check mark. Then of course the dividend cost is easily afforded and uh, they do have uh, free cash flows left after that dividend, so that's another check mark. And shareholders have not been diluted of it over the last three years, so that's another check mark. Unfortunately though, there has been a lot of inconsistency in both the top line and bottom line revenues. In terms of total revenue, gross profit, operating income, net income, operating cash flow, and free cash flow, all of these have been inconsistent. And a lot of that has to do with, of course, uh, going back to just pre-COVID. And of course, COVID really was the catalyst for the excellent revenues that we're seeing at the moment. In terms of the debt to equity, Typically, we're looking for something below 40%, so we have to mark them down for that. However, on the return on equity, they're meeting our target of 10% compound annual growth. Same for return on asset, same for return on invested capital, and the same for the earnings per share. So all of these showing really good compounding returns every single year. Now, if we come down to the verdict on the fundamentals, uh, this is it's pretty strong. 56% of our criteria is being met. Uh, only 44% of our criteria are not being met. And uh, one would think that based on this, we would be all buy, 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 buy. But this is where things get interesting because we like to look at the value of the company in relation to the value of the stock. And we often say this, that either you find companies are hugely undervalued or they're usually hugely overvalued. It's very, very rare that you find companies that are fairly valued. And so to do this, we essentially come down to our two models that we use. And we use both a combination of a free cash flow valuation model, and we also use a um, DCF via the EPS model. And uh, basically both of these models take into account uh, current scenarios, last three years performance. It also takes into account future growth factors. So looking at the free cash flow model, we can see here that this is the company's currently trading at 27 times the multiple of free cash flow, which it's it's not excessively high, but it definitely is on the high side. Typically, when we look to invest into companies, it's somewhere in the region of 20 to 30, but it really does depend on the company and it does depend on a lot of factors. So on the low side, the stock's actually true value is about 82 bucks. In the medium, it's sitting about 110, and on the high side, it's sitting at 164, giving it an average of about 119. Now, if we come to our DCF model, um, we can see slightly more aggressive because obviously we're focusing on a 12% discount rate. We, we're taking a different variables of four, six, and seven, four, six, and seven percent on the on the bear, the median, and the bull case. And we're also working towards a fair target PE of about 20, which is usually the sort of comfort level we invest into stocks. Now, if we take a look at this on uh, the fair pricing. We're coming out at about 102 bucks per share. Now, of course, if we come up to the valuation, we can see that uh, the stock is trading at quite a bit considerably above that range. And the analyst target of 170, we feel is exceptionally bullish. Uh, it just does not line up with our own analysis. And so our personal price point that we see for the company head, based on where the company is right now, based on the historical trends, we think the stock is worth realistically somewhere in the order of 119 to 120 bucks. Now, that means if we had to invest into the stock today, we're up for about a 
loss on the stock. In addition to which, to meet our criteria of making at least a 12% return, we'd need to buy Apple at 104 bucks and 72 cents. So honestly speaking, I think that this stock could be very susceptible to a big market correction. If the sentiment goes against Apple in any way, there could be a big correction because there is a disparity between the actual price of the company versus the market cap, which is obviously determined by what investors are prepared to pay for the company. So from that perspective, as much as I love the company, I've got to say I'm definitely out on this one. Uh, it's a firm sell for me and uh, the stock just doesn't make sense for me. So I hope this video helped you understand exactly what's going on with Apple today. And of course, that you found value in the financial analysis around the company. So if you did enjoy it, please don't be shy. Let us know in the comment section down below. And uh, you will find, if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section. We've got a lot of community members who are actively engaged in uh, our community discussions. So don't be shy. You're in great company. And as always, we'll see you in the next video soon. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, check out this video next. And if you do have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have not already subscribed to our channel, click on the subscribe button down below now.